How you guys doing? How you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great practice today. We had um, the Pasquale family come out and present. Well, we we switched Nick. Uh, we switched um, Joshua Swift's number to 36 for that reason to have um, him represent Nick Pasquale. So we had the Pasquale family come out today, present him with the $10,000 check that goes to him from their foundation. He represents the foundation, the family, and Nick here at UCLA. And then that's that. But um, the guys that have been wearing that number, we had uh, Ethan Fernea, Alex Johnson. So it's all been really good walk-ons that have shown like what it truly is to be a Bruin. And, you know, that's really what Nick held up when he was here just in that short amount of time. So I'm just happy that uh, Swifty was pretty excited to, to switch his number and not to caught up in, you know, with some kids are usually caught up in jersey numbers and just more of the meaning behind it. So it was pretty awesome. Does he, does he get a scholarship with that? Well, no, but he has the money that, so it's a, mm -hmm. it's a little bit of that. Was that before practice, after practice? When? Uh, having the parents? No, so they just did it just now. Okay. Yeah, he didn't know. We knew they were coming this weekend. Um, it was kind of a surprise for Josh, though. Cool. And we wanted to do it in front of the team. Mm -hmm. And um, there'll be a little bit of, there'll be more videos, and you'll see Josh speaking on it and, and stuff like that, what it means to him and stuff like that. So. A uh, big rally by the defense today to, to win. Uh, what did you think overall of, of how it went? I, I just like that they were still competing in the last period because it was hot today, you know. So the fact that guys came out, they were competing hard. Um, defense didn't quit because they were down a lot. Um, I was just glad that they came out and, you know, it came down to the threes last play of the game and, and uh, defense came through. So, you know, they're competing at a high level. I appreciate that. I just like guys are showing up and being the same guy each day. You know, so as long as we can continue to do that, we'll, we'll build that. Ethan looks still to be very locked in right now. Yeah, yeah, Ethan's the one. He's our, uh, he's that's QB one. He's, you guys are watching. He's spinning it pretty well right now. You know, um, his leadership has has really grown, and he's just taking on the role of you know being QB one. And it looks like uh, TJ's back to being more explosive than he was in the spring. Have you seen that? Yeah, TJ looks pretty good. You know, he lost a little bit of weight, so we just wanted him to. Um, I think. Um, he looks more explosive because he knows the plays a little bit more. You know what I mean? When you're thinking and going, it's kind of a little different. It's kind of hard. So I think he's he's more, a little bit more comfortable with the offense, so he's doing well. Injury-wise, it looked like Garrett uh, had some kind of ankle thing, but maybe avoided a serious injury. Yeah, I just held him out at the end, but he was able to come back out. He just taped it up. Josh Carlin was not in there. What was going on with Josh? I did not see that, but I know he did practice all the way up to that. So. I didn't see him in the training room. Or, I mean, in this in the shed or anything. So I'm sure I'm just getting some some other guys some reps with the wings. About uh, Jalen Davies. Davies, um, lower extremity. No, no ligaments, no pulls or anything. Just no fatigue. So uh, back before not too long. Yeah, probably. I think he did a little bit like Indy yesterday, mm -hmm. and it kind of shut him down a little bit today. We'll see what he does coming up. Wallace. Sunday. KJ Wallace. KJ Wallace. Um, Question. What does Justin Martin do to kind of push Ethan and maybe go for that backup spot too? Uh, that's up for grabs right now. We're trying to find out who's going to be the two. Um, Ethan has kind of pulled away from the rest of those guys, so it's not really them pushing him anymore. It's more Ethan just pushing himself. But we need somebody to come out and solidify that there too. What did you think about the, the pass rush today, the guys on the edge and how they did? They're doing a good job. Um, they're just finding ways to get to the quarterback, all the guys. So if it's Femi coming off the edge, if it's Busick, if it's Devin, Apu, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited for the D-line. And we got a couple more guys in the hole that are on their way too. So once we get them out of. I like Kane, Kane might have been doing some of that too. Kane did, did a little yeah. bit of that today also too. So like I said before, it's going to be hard to replace uh, the 15th pick and then the two, the twins. So I think it's going to be a, a, a collective group of guys that are, Helping and, and getting pressure on the quarterback. That's How long until Sharif is able to participate? Um, I'm not sure yet. I don't want to put dates on anybody, but he's trending in the right direction of losing weight, so we're just waiting. On him. And same with Jalen Berger? Yeah. I think that's going to be pretty soon. It's coming up, but I, I just want to take my time because sure. 
You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm just scared that we'll, we'll end up losing them. So I'm truly gonna take my time with that. Yeah. What was? What is the definition of? Uh, you run a play. Uh, what? What gives the a point the offense versus the defense? What's the cutoff? Or what is? Well, so it's the situation. So it was red zone, first, second, or third down, depending on what it was. Um, first and ten, if they can get maybe four or four or more. Um, second down, they got to get the first down, third down, same thing. Third down was two points, so whoever got the third down got two points. Uh, could you talk a little bit about Scott White and what he's kind of meant to that linebacker room? Um, just a great linebacker coach. You know, he's coached most of the really good guys that came through here with Coach Moore. Um, Brick was here also, but he coached Miles Jack, EK, Anthony Barr, Zumwalt, um, Kenny Young. You know, so he's, he's coached a lot of guys. And, you know, they respond to him, so I just wanted to you know, bring some guys back that uh, did a good job while they were here at UCLA. Uh, Maliki Matabao, a, a, a favorite target of Ethan. I mean, is he poised for maybe an all-conference type season, you think? Yeah, most definitely. You know, um, he truly has an opportunity to win the, the Mackey Award, so I'm excited to see him and just see how he progresses throughout the season. But, you know, he, he can block on the edge and he can catch passes, so yeah, he's a big target for us. We saw some coaches out there with headsets. Um, was that the first time you did that in fall camp, or what was the communication? Uh, was it's just like? it's just so um, Akaga can talk to the D line. I mean, to the the green dot uh, players. So whichever one he has in there, it was just a player to co the coach to player. Is it a switch, or will it be a specific guy on the field? I don't know if you want to say who it is. Or... Yeah, I'm not gonna say who it yeah. is, but it's specific guys on each side. You okay. can't have two out there on the same team. You can't have two. Okay, yeah. What did you think about uh, Tavake, given what uh, happened to Garrett? And was he, what, what did he show you as far as what he was able to do out there? Yeah, Prongos came in, Tavake stayed. So it was um, Prongos did a pretty good job, but they're rotating. They've been progressing, so it's it's a uh, it's good to get younger guys reps in live situations and uh, with the ones too. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to see him with the one line. I know if that was a game, Garrett probably would have came back. But um, it was just good to give these young guys some reps, especially in a competition in the red zone. You know?